Hello and welcome everyone. I hope that you are all keeping safe and well uh, during this Saturday evening and uh, uh, thank you so much once again for joining in um, and I would like to showcase some of the most memorable photographs um, in my years of travels in the wilds uh, in Sri Lanka and overseas. Uh, to start off with I like to show one of my favorite photographs. Uh, this is a really really cute moment which I managed to capture of uh, the Serendips cops owl. Uh, it's an endemic bird to Sri Lanka found only in our island. Um, they were discovered recently uh, as far back as 2004 and uh, I really really wanted to see them for many many years. Uh, I, uh, I remember going about four to five times into Singharaja trying to locate them. They're, made, they're found in the lowland rainforests of the island and I I was not successful. Um, my tracker Tilak tried really, really hard, but um, we did not uh, have any success until one day I was back in Colombo. I was having a dinner with some family friends' place, and uh, I got a call from Tilak late at night saying uh, that two juvenile young owls were are seen roosting together uh, in a branch uh, of a tree very close to the roadside and for me to come ASAP. So I said, look, I can't come in the middle of the night, but um, I would try to make it uh, as early as possible the next day. So I immediately contacted my, one of my best friends, uh, Hamid, and we decided let's leave at about 3.30 a.m. We reached there at about 5.30, and we walked up to this place where Tilak was waiting for us, and lo and behold, these beautiful birds were together. They were perched really, really close to the uh, small village road uh, right next to the rainforest. And uh, we set up our tripods and waited for the light to get better. Uh, we kept the cameras at sil on silent as well because uh, we didn't want to disturb them as they are roosting for the day. And, uh, and the light was pretty patchy as well because uh, the sun was falling here and there so we had to wait for moments where the cloud used to cover over the uh, over the forest so that there was even light for the picture um, this moment i think this frame where uh, this bear, this young owl rested its uh, head on the other one's shoulder uh, i have only one frame of this uh, sequence uh, because it was just a brief moment and i'm really really happy that i got this because <clears throat> this is this just shows the intimacy and the interaction between animals. I love taking photographs which are interactive and intimate rather than just two animals posing together. And this brings out a lot into a picture and uh, that's what makes this one of my favorite pictures. Moving on to some uh, another owl from uh, the wet zones down to the dry zone of Vilpatu. This is the majestic forest eagle owl, also known as the spot-bellied eagle owl. Um, it's the largest species of owl in Sri Lanka. Um, so this is photographed in Iriakulamvillu um, back in about 2012. Uh, we were uh, staying in, inside the bung in, inside a bungalow uh, inside the park and uh, we were on our last morning drive and we had not seen any leopards and we were quite desperate to see a uh, leopard on our final game drive and as we were winding on this dark road uh, this forested road leading towards this window uh, we noticed a bird <clears throat> flying over over us uh, and it dropped something on the ground uh, as we drove up we noticed that this was actually a half-eaten snake uh, we initially thought that this was a crested serpent eagle and as we went to the opening of the villu, our driver, Senevi, immediately stopped and he showed with his finger uh, at something, was pointing at something. Initially, I thought that it was um, a leopard, but then we realized up close it was uh, this majestic owl, just really, really close to our jeep. Uh, we managed to get some pictures while it was perched on the tree, uh, but then it flew off and landed on a, a wavy branch like a, a branch which is not very stable uh, and there were a lot of gray langur monkeys also perched there and they were getting excited because this owl is so powerful it's known to kill and eat adult monkeys so with that instability of that branch he suddenly fell onto the ground 
and he was a bit startled and when he fell this is the moment where he got up and he was a bit startled uh that's why he's on the ground you never see this bird on the ground like this otherwise and uh, what's unique about it is the the white sands of vilpattu it's really famous the 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 lakes which are known as villus uh, from which the name vilpattu comes um have a wide brim of sand it's usually iconic to see um leopards uh, really lazing around in the white sand in the golden light uh, you would never hear of uh, seeing a forest eagle out uh, in a in the sand like this so that's why it's a really rare shot it's a beautiful setting a beautiful background um and also i was really lucky to capture this i wish i had my big lens which i have now back then so that i could get a sharper shot but it's not about the sharpness end of the day it's the moment and the memory that lives on uh, i would never forget this encounter for the rest of my life uh that being said i move on to another extremely rare sighting uh this was also in singhraja which is sri lanka's largest tract of lowland rainforest uh this is a very very rare white morph of the purple faced leaf langur uh they are endemic monkey species to sri lanka uh the the normal monkey is black to dark gray to brownish in color uh so this particular individual has a white morph which is caused by uh, a phenomenon called leucrism uh where some of the pigments are not present and thereby uh, causing the fur to become pure white and not to give any color uh there are, so we got to know about these few white monkeys in this troop uh from different sources we tried for several locations and several trips we did try to go and see if we could spot these guys but we were not successful and on one of the trips back in 2014 uh myself and my friend riaz we we took off and while we were driving on this village road we, we were not expecting to see these guys but immediately we noticed there were two white monkeys there along with the rest of the troop we you know parked ourselves um, waited quietly without taking our cameras out for a while just let the monkeys habituate to our presence and then they slowly got accustomed and then we got a field day taking some beautiful photographs uh, of these rare individuals moving on to another monkey photograph uh, this of course is quite disturbing and sad but of course it is the raw reality of nature this is the circle of life uh, this is survival of the fittest um, this is in yala national park this grey langur uh, came to drink water from the puddle uh, and there was a young mugger crocodile waiting uh, who grabbed his arm and it was a struggle thereafter uh, we watched this struggle going on for about 15 to 20 minutes uh, the monkey somehow ma- managed to not get dragged into the water but unfortunately the crocodile kept doing death rolls uh, rolling on uh, to twist the arm uh, in order to break it off or maybe just drag the animal <clears throat> drag the poor monkey in um, we were running out of time and we had to exit from the park so uh, unfortunately i wasn't there at the end uh, but few of the vehicles who had bungalow bookings inside the park confirmed that uh, the monkey did manage to escape uh, unfortunately i don't think he would have survived especially with a broken arm like that uh, but this is nature it's just the way things are uh, if the crocodile doesn't get to you something else would um, end of the day the crocodile needs to feed as well that's something you have to be very mature when you're going into the wild and realize that you nothing is cuddly and cute and everything is not flowery uh, out in the wild the wild is a brutal dark place and capturing that also uh, is important to understand what the cycle of life is all about uh, another predator and prey moment uh, this is an indian rock python this too is in yala national park uh, this python had managed to capture and constrict and kill a black naped hare um, and was in the process of swallowing it whole uh they they usually start with the head as you can see uh we got it was a random sighting uh one of our safari guides uh, managed to spot it i was also in the jeep with some clients and uh this was a, it's a very rare moment you do see pythons off and on but you don't see them uh, constricting and feeding uh, out in the open uh, 
this was also in the thicket, but we managed to get a good angle for this more, uh, for this picture. Um, this is the in uh, the Sri Lanka grey hornbill. It's an endemic species of owl. Uh, sorry, I'm very sorry. It's an endemic species of bird, um, and uh, they're found mostly in the dry zone, but also in certain parts of the wet zones like Sinaraja. You do get these guys. Um, uh, what's unusual in their behavior is that uh, the females, when they're about to lay the eggs, goes into uh, creates a nest in a burrow of a tree, uh, usually a hollow part of the tree. And uh, the male would seal the female in using mud and clay so that the female will not be able to leave. And the female invariably would also pluck her feathers out uh, for a while till uh, the the chicks are uh, hatched and they are big enough to leave uh, because um, uh, so that the male would take the duty of sending food uh, into the female so he would keep going up and down delivering uh, whatever he could find so this was the moment where i caught this picture what i like about this shot is the way the light falls on the trunk of the tree and the tree has a beautiful texture to it I like that texture in the photograph. It brings out so much character to the picture. Along with the bird and the shadows, uh, the different hues and tones of the tree along with the texture brings out so much into a photograph. So it's very important to be observant of your background, the textures of the background, which make a captivating image. This is uh, one of my favorite animals in Sri Lanka. Uh, this is the sloth bear. Uh, Sri Lanka has only one species of bear, and this is the uh, this is the sloth bear. is a very very comical uh, kind of a, a interesting animal. They are they are quite uh, almost human like in some of the antics that they do. I have quite a good collection of them, uh, doing all sorts of uh, uh, things which almost look human. So we were passing this area in Yala, uh, known as Modaragala. And uh, we suddenly realized from this rock, uh, a, a black head is peeping out and looking at us. Uh, then we realized that this was a sloth bear having a good swim and a good bath uh, in one of the rock pools, the natural rock pools up up in on this, on this rock. Uh, it was the height of the dry season and this guy was having a good time. So we waited for a while until he got out of his uh, water hole uh, and started walking down the rock towards us. Uh, but I was, uh, because I obviously I knew that the bear was after a bath, uh, invariably he's going to shake the water off. So I was getting my camera ready. I knew he's going to do that. And I focused on the head because the main thing is even when he's shaking off, I need the head in focus um, as he was twisting his body. So I kept the focus on the head and at the right moment, the bear shook it, shook off the water and I managed to get this shot. This also is in Modaragala, but a different tour, a different trip. Uh, this was uh, where I traveled with Riaz. Uh, we cut the Royal Tom, we stopped. We, didn't, we decided we we're not going to go to the Royal Tomian cricket match and we were going to go to Yala. And it was the best decision we made, I believe, in 2017. We were going along Modaragala when we spotted this big male on the road and he slowly walked towards the rock. And then we noticed that there was a female on the rock as well. And <clears throat> they were actually in the process of mating. And they kept mating uh, as we were there. We were the only jeeps uh, present at that time uh, until they kept moving the, their, their location while they were mating they repeatedly and finally came to this beautiful spot uh, right on the top where the light was falling perfectly onto the side. And I, uh, out of the sequence of shots, I was very, I'm very happy with this uh, because the male is about to bite the neck. Uh, it's usually part of the process, just to you know have a small, uh, uh, small bite on the neck of the female, and the female is of course uh, doesn't seem to be very uh, having much fun at the mo at this time. The emotions of this shot is what I really like. Uh, of course, the light is perfect, and I love the backdrop of the rock. Uh, rather than anything else because Yala is synonymous with having leopards perched on rocks. Uh, I think that's a signature look for a Yala leopard sighting and this really brings that out and also the, it creates a perfect background and also the texture of the rock that they are perched on is also really good. Uh, so it's one of the most memorable leopard sightings I would say 
um, in my recent years. Another really interesting photograph I took of a leopard. This is in Vilpatu National Park last year. I was guiding some clients uh, when we uh, we noticed uh, there was a female leopard uh, close to Borupan Vilu uh, out in the open, and uh, then she went back into the into the forest and uh, did not come out. We heard a lot of noise inside. We presumed that there is another male as well inside, uh, and they may have been mating. Uh, we were hoping that both of them would come out and. Uh, get on with their business, but uh, it did not happen. So we stayed for quite a while. We were having breakfast, stayed for more than an hour. And then on the far corner of the villu, the leopard did appear. And she started walking uh, in the section which, which had some tall grass. So I was waiting in anticipation for some interesting moment because the light was falling beautifully in this area. And I knew there was going to be some good pictures. And it did finally, as the leopard was perfectly camouflaged behind these reeds and looking straight at our jeep and it reminds me of the movie ghost and the darkness uh, where the lions were hiding behind the grass it looks like that it's quite eerie as well knowing that there's a predator behind this grass um, and the way the photograph is taken i'm, I'm i really like the way uh, the grass in the foreground uh, it just camouflages this animal and it takes a while for anybody to really notice that there's a leopard behind this uh, and it's perfectly blended and camouflaged. Mm, so this is a very special leopard photograph for me as well. Um, moving on to another species of cat. Uh, this is the jungle cat. Uh, they are quite difficult to see, especially during daytime. It's almost impossible to see uh, in most parts of the country. Uh, the only place that I know of which you do have a chance of seeing during the day uh, is at Uduwalawe National Park where I got this photograph. But you have to have, uh, a, you know, some sort of understanding on the behaviors and the telltale signs of these cats. So experience does matter and also going with the right tracker. So I have one of the best trackers who used to who goes with me in Uduwalawe known as Lionel. And uh, we were on safari uh, for two days and on the, <clears throat> on the second day in the morning, uh, we tried really hard, but we didn't have any luck. Uh, at about nine o'clock, uh, we thought, okay, let's have some breakfast. And we parked. We said, okay, we are not going to go to a picnic spot. Uh, we'd rather park on the roadside uh, inside the park and just have whatever we brought uh, while uh, while we wait. And uh, that was a good decision because a few moments later, this jungle cat suddenly crossed the road and walked into the for into the bush. Uh, we immediately dropped our breakfast wherever it was, like, was and uh, drove ahead. And this cat was just walking in and suddenly gave, turned around and gave us this piercing look. Uh, and I really like the fact that the leaves in the foreground were out of focus, which gives it almost like a tunnel-like look uh, where the subject is in the middle and the green parts act as a frame, almost like a natural frame. Uh, so this is a technique which I really like, uh, where we diffuse the fore foreground and uh, focus on the animal, which is further in inwards, um, and it came out beautifully. Now moving on to actually the tuskers. The tuskers of Sri Lanka, uh, I would say, are what I'm most passionate about, and I've been, um, you know, trying to uh, explore and document almost every task I could find in Sri Lanka over the years since I was a kid. Um, elephants in general are very, very close to my heart. Uh, and this, the rarity of these tuskers uh, is what makes me really interested about them. Um, there's only roughly around 200, maybe 250 tuskers left on the island compared to over 6,000 elephants. Um, the, there's a, so only the males of the Asian elephants carry ivory. And unfortunately in Sri Lanka, due to different historic reasons of human manipulation, may be hunting or taking domestication or exports. Uh, all of that has led to the prime tusker population declining. And most of the males who are left are without tusks. So, it's very, every task is special, and that's uh, I've been very active many years uh, on the course to create awareness and conserve these majestic 
animals. Um, that being said, this photograph also is by far my most favorite image of all my wildlife photographs. Uh, this was in Wilpatu National Park and this tusker is named Mega. Uh, he was photographed by me in 2013 and uh, Unfortunately, Mega died last year. Uh, thankfully, it was due to natural causes. Uh, he was, I think, attacked by another male. Uh, well, it's sad, but at least it, he died in the wild in natural circumstances. Uh, so this story is that we were actually driving past Madhadan Madhua. Uh, we reached an area called Thambiolua, where our tracker Priyantha spotted this guy uh, deep in the forest. Uh, so we, we know he's a very, very shy tusker. He's extremely shy and very wary of vehicles and people. Uh, maybe that's the reason why he survived for so long. Uh, so we parked ourselves uh, by the roadside and quietly waited for him to get habituated to us and see what happens. And he slowly approached, like he started coming slowly and gradually uh, outwards. Uh, and at one magical moment, he turned to the side and a beautiful ray of light, uh, a patch of light fell right on his face. Uh, I immediately uh, underexposed my camera uh, so that the shadows and all will be captured as well. And I took this photograph. Uh, what I really like is the mystery of this, you know, majestic beast hiding in a dense forest, uh, which is signature Wilpatu landscape. Wilpatu uh, is all about having the open villus or the lakes along with uh, this dark, dense, thick forest, which is very different from the wilds of many other national parks in Sri Lanka. And this epitomizes the spirit of Wilpatu, and that's the reason why it's really close to my heart. Uh, moving on to another very interesting tusker, this is Mahasen. He is, I think, right now. Um, the, the, the bull with the largest pair of ivory in Sri Lanka, I would say, in the wild. Um, he was a legendary tusker back in the uh, late 90s onwards, where people were seeing him for a few days, coming into Kaudula National Park, uh, interacting with females and then disappearing for the rest of the year. And he was a very mysterious bull back in the day. Uh, I remember since 2004, after my A-levels, I kept trying to uh, find him, uh, but despite the multiple visits to Kaudula, I was never lucky. I didn't have the right contacts, or maybe I went in the wrong time of year. Uh, and also, back in the day, there was no social media. There was little, very little networking. And I remember, like some people used to say he's dead. Some people said they have not seen him for a few years. So I was, I actually lost hope until around 2009 um, when I started. Uh, started chatting in some wildlife forums and uh, uh, my now very good friend uh, and uh, mentor Namal Kamal Goda uh, said that he saw this guy a few weeks back and I was really excited uh, but of course I missed him that year as well. Uh, 2010 again I missed him, 11 as well and finally in 2012 I managed to get a glimpse of him. Uh, it was a magical moment because we were waiting in the park waiting for near a herd of elephants hoping that this guy would come out uh, and only at about 4 30 4 45 uh, far away in the distance i suddenly noticed this massive gleaming pair of ivory uh, leading this elephant out into the open and we just we really got really excited but we didn't want to rush towards him because i knew he's going to walk towards the herd i asked the driver not to panic and just wait in one place and uh, the, the bull started walking towards us and walked right up to our jeep, right to the side of our jeep, stopped there, looked at me uh, from one side, one pair of eyes, one eye, and they turned the other way and looked at us from the other side as well. Uh, he was in the peak of musk, so he had a very strong smell as well. Uh, we had kept our lenses down by then because he was just too close for a photograph. And uh, after having a good look at who we are, he, re he just walked past us and into the herd. That was the first time I saw him. It was so magical. Uh, and this is one of the pictures of that first encounter. I love the background, the, the light green, the dark green hues, as well as the reddish leaves in the background as well. And also this female 
with the ears flared up looking at us as well it just brings out so much character to the photograph uh, i had two more encounters a um, few years later with mahasen but the first time is always the best uh, one where you you always remember and treasure that moment especially if you have worked really really hard to get this sighting uh, another favorite shot of mine this was actually uh, the cover of my book which i published in 2015 named uh, children of eden uh, this is a magical location called kalavav uh, these two young tuskers are feeding peacefully in this beautiful environment and it's a very very serene um, setting uh, there were a lot of other elephants also around us and it's a place that's very close to my heart i really hope to go there again once this whole panic of the pandemic is over um i even now uh, when i'm stressed out when i'm upset when i'm uh, you know when i i'm not in the best of moods uh, sometimes when i look at this picture uh, it takes me back back to 2011 where we this encounter where we had this encounter and this moment and it just really helps me to get through the day uh just thinking about this beautiful location it's almost a paradise uh, like the my the title of my book which said children of eden i feel that these tuskers are the last children of eden uh this because sri lanka is the garden of eden i would say a paradise a natural paradise uh, but of course it's fast disappearing and we are uh on the verge of uh, losing most of our forest cover as we speak so it's very important for me to showcase the beauty and of nature of sri lanka to to sri lankans themselves and well to the world and uh, hopefully as a, as collectively and cohesively we can make a change ending our tuskers um, i'd like to showcase um, this is actually a very majestic up and coming bull Uh, the angle uh, taken this is actually taken with a gopro so it's a very wide angle photograph which makes it look quite large but he's actually a very very young tusker is not very tall maybe about 7 uh, 6 to 7 feet tall uh, he's a young bull in udawala way known as bullet uh, i believe that he was uh, initially an orphan who was brought up at the elephant transit home and then released back into the wild um unfortunately despite his beauty and uh, impressive pair of tusks uh, he's developed a nasty habit of uh, frequenting by the roadside near the electric fence uh, asking for handouts from passers by uh, this is very harmful for him because people who are ignorant uh, will start feeding him uh, things which are not naturally digested to elephants and can cause a lot of harm especially if they throw polythene and things which are very harmful for them uh, it can really adversely affect this uh, elephant its health and maybe even result in death so i urge the wildlife authorities of uh, udawala way to see if they can even build a secondary electric fence to keep this guy away from the road and he's also a prime target because of his tusks for coaches Uh, people are looking uh, all the time and uh, this is not the best of circumstances to be out there uh, an open target uh, if this guy has is protected for the next 15 to 20 years he is going to become one of or if not the most impressive task that sri lanka has ever seen so it's very very uh, important it's imperative that the wildlife authorities takes this seriously and do something to keep these guys uh, safe uh, there's another young tusker in the park as well with very impressive ivory known as arvind i hope that arvind and bullet both of them uh, are safe for the next uh, few decades and continue to awe inspire uh, sri lankans and uh, overseas visitors alike that being said we are moving on to a different country and a different continent altogether we are moving to africa this is a land very close to my heart uh, and starting kenya basically i i visit kenya very often and the park that i always start my safari is with is nairobi national park this is a national park right next to the capital city of kenya i believe that this is the only safari park in a capital city uh what's amazing about it is despite being so close such close to an uh, urban environment 
has almost all the big game uh, you could find except i would say elephants uh, you have all the big five and it's one of the best places in kenya i would say to uh, see both species of rhinoceros the the white rhino uh, as well as the black rhino which is very very rare to see uh, usually uh, here we have the white rhino uh, posing in front of the city landscape this photograph is initially taken in color uh, it wasn't very impressive as a color photograph. Uh, I converted to uh, it to a, uh, what you call a high key image uh, in uh, Lightroom. Uh, I converted it to black and white and then increased the exposure and the contrast to bring out the details of the picture. This is a technique that I've been using for the last few years. Uh, it, uh, for, especially for images where the subject has uh, is in the shadows or is a little bit dark and the background is really well lit up. Uh, this is perfect for high key images where you can play around with uh, Lightroom or maybe Photoshop. Uh, but it's you know generally a very artistic rendition uh, of what it could be. And I really like to have, see this majestic animal, uh, almost like a medieval, um, you know, mythical animal, like a, like a tank, built like a tank, uh, with a backdrop of huge city skyscrapers. So that's what makes Nairobi National Park that's that much special. Uh, it's a true urban wilderness and it shows that wildlife and humanity can survive together. Now moving on to Amboseli. Uh, overall, Kenya has the best light possible for photography. Uh, you can go to town with different techniques and methods to get your pictures. Uh, rather than being safe and taking a photograph which uh, where the subject uh, where the sunlight falls directly on the subject i i prefer to look at a backlit uh, method of photography where uh, you photograph against the light uh, because i photograph this bird uh, this bird is actually an unusual species known as the cori bustard um, because i photographed against the light the, uh, you notice how the grass is golden in color this is not the color of the grass in fact this is actually sunlight hitting the grass and illuminating it and giving that golden glow uh, and also you see the the almost like a halo around the the bird uh, because your food shoot you have shot it against the light you get this beautiful halo like a, a golden halo around this animal i love experimenting with uh, this form of light and taking something less safe and less out of the ordinary uh, that's africa is your playground for photography and you have to make the most of it uh, this is in masai mara uh, this is obviously a mating pair of lions what i like about it of course the the emotions in both the male and the female uh, and also the the colors of this photograph it was raining if you see there's sort of a drizzle going on and um, the lighting and the colors of the grass was perfect for this moment. Uh, it was almost like a pastel watercolors effect on the grass. And uh, out of all the pictures and the angles that I took of this mating sequence, this was my favorite. Uh, another very special moment, two mortal enemies, the hyena and the lion, uh, crossing paths and facing opposite ends. Uh, this was a very unique picture which I photographed in my first trip to Africa. This was in Amboseli National Park. Uh, and as you see, using this backlit or against the light uh, style, uh, the grass is golden in color. And uh, also the animals are, you know, underexposed. I have used a technique where I reduce the brightness in the camera itself. And it brings out so much detail uh, of this of this image uh, you get almost like a halo effect you see in the chin of the lion a little bit on the hyena as well and them facing opposite ends makes it a beautiful frame for a photograph another golden light moment uh, this also in amboseli uh, this wildebeest was uh, <clears throat> basically uh, galloping across and the lighting was perfect i just had to take this picture I underexposed it and you see the halo which I talk about and how the dust is also uh, golden in color in you, the way you take it. It's all about the technique that you use uh, when taking these pictures. So uh, you can experiment as much as you like in Africa. 
the lighting is perfect for this and um, I, I go no matter how many times I visit I never get I never tire of that uh, this is uh, an African leopard, of course, uh, in Masai Mara. This is photographed last year. She was a young female, and uh, she was initially, we found her the day before, perched up on a tree with a kill, and uh, she was not coming down. Uh, it was getting dark, and we decided, okay, maybe she might stay up all night because there were hyenas on the ground. Uh, and because she has a kill, she might be eating on the tree, and she might stay the night. He said, okay, maybe let's try the next day. Uh, en route to the, the sighting, we, of course, encountered that mating pair of lions I showed earlier. And then we, after all of that, we reached uh, to this spot just to check if she's still there. And she was. Uh, and we knew now it was almost midday and she's definitely going to come down because the, rear, the Mara River is nearby. And we figured that she's going to definitely come down and walk to the river. Uh, and what we, so we waited for patiently and uh, i was with some clients at that time and uh, some of them were getting a bit impatient uh, but i told them look just trust me and this way this guy this late female leopard definitely going to come down just be patient and we were rewarded about 15 minutes after i said this she came down and she started walking towards the river so we intercepted her and uh, went up ahead and had the perfect angle and the positioning to get an eye level photograph i love taking eye level shots like this and she as she was walking the light was per, hitting perfectly from the side uh, giving a good balance of light and shadows as well and i uh, i i was very happy with this shot uh, and also being an african leopard it's very different from the sri lankan subspecies it's always a pleasure to photograph any different subspecies uh, of an animal this is a cheetah, uh, also in the Masai Mara. Uh, it's a quite, I find this quite a funny image because she's actually not laughing, but rather she's uh, yawning. Uh, but uh, the way it's captured, uh, it, it looks quite funny. And uh, I like capturing expressions in animals' faces uh, rather than uh, a boring poker-faced <laughs> pose. Uh, any kind of expression is always interesting. Um, because you're, you're, you're photographing uh, not just an animal, but a character. And uh, so this is uh, the reason why I really like this shot. Uh, moving on to, I would say, my second favorite animal in Africa after the elephant. Uh, this is the black rhino. I really, really like the black rhino even more than the white rhino. I find them far more interesting. They are more aggressive. They are more... Um, they are more grumpy, I would say, by nature, and they are more active as well. Uh, while I feel the white rhino is very more docile and more like a large lawnmower just eating grass, while these guys are more active, more mobile. Uh, so this is an interesting story. This was in Nairobi National Park. Uh, we were on safari, and we were follow trailing this black rhino, uh, this big male, who was following uh, a female and a sub-adult calf. Uh, obviously, he was interested in mating with the female, but after, we were driving parallel to these guys, and the female was going to have none of it. She just turned around and let, let out this high-pitched scream, uh, very unusual noise. We don't expect such a noise from a, such a large animal. And the male was in such a shock, he just turned to the right and started galloping towards us, straight towards us. And we were wondering whether this guy is going to charge and uh, crash into us in excitement uh, and uh, we were just bracing ourselves for the worst uh, luckily for us he swerved to the right and moved away uh, i think pretty embarrassed after being chased away by this female uh, as you see this is the female and the young uh, sub-adult calf that uh, this male was chasing uh, black rhinos are so much more interesting as you see they are they are quite active. They are, I like the way they pose. They are a little bit smaller than the white rhinos, but nevertheless, very impressive. Uh, Masai Mara is a place where it's very difficult to see black rhino. They do have a few, but I was really lucky. I had, a, I had an excellent Masai guide. He's from the Masai tribe itself. His name is Mike. He was determined to show us... Um, a black rhino in the Mara on our last safari and he really worked hard. We went into deep into the bush close to the lookout rock 
we were going off road because we had some special permits as well and he was actually uh, sniffing the rhino he said I, look i can smell this guy and i'm he was tracking him throughout the bush and finally out into the open uh, this guy we, uh, mike managed to uh, take us all the way up to where the rhino was and he was the rhino was walking around in the plains and i really like this shot because of the landscape the background of the masai mara can be seen clearly it just shows how vast and expansive this environment is and i also like the the little ox peckers who are on the back of the rhino as well just <laughs> shows you know the the symbiotic relationship within these birds and uh, animals like the rhino and the buffalo so and also you can see some topi antelope as well uh, out there so it's a beautiful landscape and a typical scenery from the masai mara um another magical moment in the mara so this was with my clients i was guiding them in 2019 uh, we always leave camp uh, on safari before the sun comes out usually at around 5:15 a.m and we usually find <clears throat> uh, something like either a big cat maybe a lion uh, maybe a lion or a group of li- a pride of lions or some cheetah uh, in the, this instance these are the five uh, cheetah brothers known as the tona bora uh brothers um and uh, they were they were you know beautifully you know walking about uh, just before dawn and as the sun came out the initial sun and the rays of the light uh, which the sun re- reflected uh, were fiery orange the, the color was just stunning uh, this orange it's almost uh, as if uh, the 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 cheetahs on fire and uh, of course i underexposed it as well to bring out more depth in the color and as this cheetah walked this is the kind of shot that i could take uh, it almost looks like uh, the cheetah is uh, <laughs> engulfed in flames and this is another magical uh, moment in africa uh, the dawn the dusk uh, all those the uh, moments uh, the light is fantastic and i would encourage anyone who has not visited Kenya to visit and if you are into photography this is a photographer's paradise if you know what you are doing if you like to experiment this is the place to visit uh, talking about experimentation uh, another technique of photography which i use is what is called motion blur also called motion panning uh, where i focus on the the face of the animal as it's moving sideways and i slow the shutter speed down so that the face is in focus as i move the uh, camera along with the head of the animal the head remains in focus and the rest of the body as well as the background gets blurred out it gives almost like a, a 3d uh, mo- movement kind of a uh, effect if you keep observing it you feel like the animal is actually moving and this is a photograph uh, taken like that of a serval a serval is a rare species of wild cat found in Kenya uh, and in other parts of Africa as well it was a very very special sighting and uh, it, you know, i just thought uh, as the light was fading as well this maybe i have a go at this uh, motion panning and it came out beautifully another magical moment is uh, the sunsets in amboseli as well this is in amboseli national park uh, you see as the sun is setting these two young male elephants are having a bit of a tussle uh, and this beautiful mountain in the background uh, also right you know showcasing the the landscapes and the, the breathtaking sceneries of africa uh, this is not mount kilimanjaro uh, but there are several mountains uh, which you can see from amboseli as you on safari the the sunsets the sunrises they're all magical you can get some beautiful silhouettes if you work at it uh this is also at sunrise in the masai mara i love hyenas the, a lot of people don't like hyenas they think oh they're scavengers and you know they've been portrayed quite badly uh in the media as well as in cartoons like uh, lion king but they are quite uh, formidable predators themselves and in most cases uh, the lions actually chase the hyenas after the hyenas have done their own hunting and uh, captured uh, some prey uh this is in the morning light i i was with some cl- clients and i remember uh, insisting the driver to stop immediately as i saw this the way the light was falling uh, against the animal 
the halo uh, effect of the hyenas uh, the, of the light was beautiful and i insisted that all my clients try out this new technique and came out beautifully another backlit moment uh, where the light is against uh, us and uh, there's a young elephant calf and um, it's just almost magical you can never tire of getting these moments as you go on safari and the elephant calves are so cute especially the african elephant calves uh, this is a quite a fine, funny moment. Uh, this was in 2019. Uh, we were in Masai Mara once again. And this pair of lions were mating uh, right in front of us. And there was an elephant, a mum elephant, a female, uh, a little bit away with her calf. But she was getting uncomfortable having these lions around. And she decided you know, to slowly walk towards these guys, maybe not to charge them immediately but she was pretending to be feeding and inching closer and closer and closer and suddenly she just charged and the lions just bolted uh, and this is the reason why she was agitated she this she was with this young calf and you see the how cute this calf is i love uh, elephant calves especially the african elephant calves are remind me of dumbo the elephant from the disney cartoon they have such large floppy ears uh, whether it's Asian or African, they're so cute and adorable and some of the action is just very interesting to see all the antics that they get into. Uh, this is a, a motion blur once again, a motion panning shot of an old male lion. Uh, as you see, the head is in focus, the head and the front part of the mane and the rest of the body is in motion. And you can almost feel the movement of the lion with this kind of new photographic technique. Uh, this is uh, a high key image where I converted this shot to black and white and changed some of the settings to give this effect. Uh, this is of a very large, big male tasker known as Little Male. Uh, I don't know why they call him Little Male, but uh, this is the name that the Amboseli Elephant Research Team, led by Dr. Cynthia Moss, uh, has named him or cataloged him as a calf. Uh, a very large task, you see, his ivory is quite long. He was walking past us and uh, uh, unfortunately he's no more. He died in 2017. Uh, the, when, I, when I went back home and I worked on Lightroom, this effect was far more captivating where you see the, the acacia trees as silhouettes um, and the background is fully lit up because the animal was in shadows and the background was in sunlight and it wasn't doing itself justice in color. So this, when I converted it to monochrome and did this, it came out beautifully. Talking about big tuskers, we'll, end, we'll come to the biggest of them all. This is uh, Tim, uh, the largest uh, tusker that I have encountered in my travels. Um, he's a massive bull. And so just to talk about my fascination and uh, uh, involvement with big tuskers of Africa, as a child for many years i've been reading so many books stories about old hunting tales as well as stories by wilbur smith and few others about these massive mammoth like elephants uh, who used to roam africa uh, for many years but unfortunately that hunting uh, and poaching uh, have ended up uh, decimating this gene pool and this gene stock and now elephants are having smaller and smaller ivory in Africa. And it, I almost thought as a kid um, in school that uh, these guys were no more. But further reading and research revealed that there are a few individuals still remaining. I researched and read up a lot. I made a lot of connections and network from different parts of Africa. And finally, uh, in 2016, uh, I was determined to go and find a big tusker, and Tim was my target because I realized Amboseli was a small park, and if Tim is around and if he's in Mast and he's around in the park, I would, would have a chance to see him. Well, uh, I think it was uh, easier said than done. Uh, I made all these arrangements. Uh, I checked with uh, Dr. Cynthia Moss's team on his whereabouts and I headed to Africa. I took my mum as well on my first venture and we spent almost five nights in Amboseli and it was not easy at all. There were so many elephants everywhere and Tim was nowhere to be seen. Uh, 
and on the final safari on the on the sixth morning uh, on the final safari the final day just before we are going to go to the airport uh, out in the distance I saw a herd of elephants and I just told the, the, the driver at the time stop and I just focus my lens and uh, lo and behold Tim was with this herd he was very far away almost a few kilometers away and I was really excited I said okay this is Tim but how can I get close to him and uh, the, my guide at the time told don't worry this guy is going to cross the road uh, in front of us let's be patient and I was really excited my adrenaline was pumping and this guy as predicted slowly followed the herd the herd initially crossed the road and then this guy slowly came and posed beautifully for us with this magical light and walked across uh, and crossed the road and headed towards the marshals and I was elated it was amazing to have this kind of a close encounter uh, my adrenaline was pumping the hair off the back of my neck was up it was just uh, the most unforgettable and unbelievable uh, wildlife moment of my life my adrenaline was so high it took me about an hour or hour and a half for, for me to calm down I was so excited this was the most magical moment in my life and uh, I was blessed to see him that day he was so tall and his tusks are almost touching the ground and you don't see this uh, these kind of bulls in Africa anymore uh, as you know um, in Africa the African elephant uh, the female and the males have tusks uh, usually the males tusks are thicker uh, and longer but over time due to selective hunting uh, where the prime bulls the big tuskers were always targeted uh, now there remains only around 20 such big tuskers in the entire African continent uh, that being said I met him again this time in 2019 I was with some clients I was guiding them and I was determined to show them the majesty of Tim and I had to pull a lot of strings and make a lot of connections to get access to see him because he was outside the national park he was uh, roaming around in a private conservancy and I had to pull a lot of strings and connections but I made it happen we went into this we got a uh, forest with the rangers and Tim was there not only was he al uh, there alone he was with uh, his friend Craig who is seen at the back here so Tim and Craig we might we feel that he might they might be half brothers uh, they're definitely not from the same mother uh, because the, the records have uh, been there for a long time by the research team but we feel that maybe it's the same father uh, because their tusk shapes are almost identical Craig is slightly smaller uh, Tim is uh, taller uh, and has bigger tusks um, but to see two big tuskers like this maybe the last one of two of the last 20 remaining in the continent in one frame in one photograph is almost unheard of it's just unbelievable to see two of them together and we were really blessed to spend over three hours in privacy we were the only guys there with, the, with that special access and my clients are really uh, happy and i think one of the, this was what the highlight of that trip um, unfortunately i was hoping to see tim again in 2020 when we were leaving uh, on a tour but unfortunately he had died two weeks earlier from natural causes uh, the reason uh, they say is because he died of a twisted gut which apparently is very common in older elephants um, we, never, we would never know but he's no more uh, unfortunately we didn't see Craig either because as Tim had died uh, Craig also has gone into hiding when we visited uh, but of course uh, there are a lot of up upcoming males in Amboseli Amboseli ecosystem has some of the highest uh, densities of up you know elephants with big ivory uh, so it's a place which is very special if you really want to see tuskers this is the place to go uh, and most of the young guys who are coming up in 10 to 15 years would be as impressive or even more impressive than Tim so I think the legacy of Tim will live on uh, he will remain as one of my favorite tuskers uh, in Sri Lanka or in Africa wherever uh, who have encountered and um, yeah so that's the it's amazing story of this majestic bull
that ends my uh, story of Africa and then we move to India. And India is home to the most majestic big cat in my opinion, the tiger. Looking into the tiger's eyes, you get hypnotized. That the gaze, that, that uh, piercing gaze is something like no other. The golden eyes just looking straight at you. Uh, and these beautiful black and orange patterns. There's nothing like that in, in, in the man-made world to replicate this beauty. Uh, for me, the, the big cat, out of all the big cats in, in the world, the tiger is my favorite. Uh, this was a young uh, male taken in uh, Thadoba National Park. And uh, I was with my friends, uh, Namal and Bala. And uh, we got really close. This, this uh, tiger was very accustomed to people and got pretty close to us. And I was man able to get this beautiful close-up shot um, as it walked right towards us in this beautiful golden light. This also is in Tadoba. This is the largest male tiger in this reserve. His name is Matkasur. Uh, he was sleeping in the, in the forest. We could see him. Uh, and our driver uh, suggested that we go up ahead and maybe turn the Jeep around and be ready as he comes onto the road. And as we were turning around, he, walk, he was walking towards us uh, with an entourage of vehicles following him. So it wasn't great for a picture. But then he suddenly swerved to the side uh, of the road towards this tree. Uh, my driver, Nikhil, immediately tried to race towards it and I had to basically hold his shoulder and say, stop, don't go near him. Uh, he asked why. I said, just wait here because the, if you really go close, we won't be able to get such a picture where he's, uh, you know, of his behavior, of him rubbing his face on the tree, uh, marking his territory, all of that. Because you need a, a wider space to take that picture because we have some big lenses as well. So I insisted that we stay where we were. And that I was very thankful for that because I was able to get this uh, beautiful male uh, in his territorial behavior, marking his scent and marking his territory. Uh, and also I love the, this picture. What I really like is the background foliage of these trees as well, which brings out so much of the habitat this animal is found in. The environment it's i love taking photographs which showcase the the habitats that these animals live in now moving on this is also in tadoba i love playing with light as i said uh, this is also against light uh, the grass was really lit up beautifully and this gray langer walked across and i was ready i get my settings i underexposed reduced the brightness of the camera so that i could capture this stunning moment uh, this is in northeastern India. This is in Assam, uh, which is in the far northeast of India, almost like uh, a different country altogether. It's a beautiful park called Kaziranga National Park. Uh, this is a hog deer. Uh, why, the way I took this picture is I wanted the, the foreground, the flowers and the plants in the foreground to be out of focus and to focus on the this deer who was peeping out of this this foliage at and looking at us, uh, it gives a really nice look because the foreground is blurred out and uh, out of focus, and your entire focus goes on to this, this beautiful animal looking straight at the camera. Uh, also in Kaziranga, the highlight of our trip is to see the great Indian one-horned rhino. So this, uh, I would say, is the most medieval and prehistoric-looking of the rhinos that I've encountered, even more, the, more so than the two species I saw in Africa. Uh, they all have this armor, armor plating of sorts, uh, and uh, they look very primeval. primeval. And, um, if you, and as the name suggests, they have only one horn, um, and they're quite large. They're actually bigger than the, the black rhino, uh, but they're still slightly smaller than the white rhino. They, are, they fit in between. Uh, this guy was walking right towards us uh, and then he swerved to the, the right and climbed onto the, uh, onto the road right in front of our jeep. Uh, he was after a female once again, like in, like in the case of the black rhino, he was after a female and the female was not having any of it. She was extremely annoyed that this guy was harassing her and following her and she charged in. The female is 
the one on the left and this is the male the male was very defensive but unfortunately he lost uh, this battle and he tucked tail and he tried to run away and the female just chased him and gave a big bite on his backside and i think he was very embarrassed he never showed himself after that uh, and the female was walking around close to the roadside for a while uh, as you see also the uh, these rhinos have this weird skin folds which look like armor plating and you know, especially on its backside and all so it's a very unique species of rhino and uh, kaziranga is the best place in the world to see this amazing species and it's a wonderful national park which i would love to visit again now moving on from india to europe to end our uh, journey uh, this is the european bison also known as the wisent uh, native the, in Poland they call them Zuber. Um, they are the, one of the largest species of cattle, wild cattle found in the world. It's so majestic. Uh, I really wanted to see some bison when I went on a business visit to Poland. Uh, I have family there. One of my uncles lives there and I told him, uncle, I want to see a bison. And he was like, what bison? I don't know what you're talking about. But I said I did my research. There's a massive forest in, in the Belarus border goes to Belarus uh, where you get these guys and can I try and after my meetings are over uh, for a few weeks uh, for a few days actually I set off on a weekend uh, with two friends of my uncle and as we were driving past this forest so there was a, the road cuts through the forest and leads to this remote village uh, we were hoping to go to the village and meet up with a professional guide who was going to take us around but on the way I noticed there were a few cyclists who had stopped and were taking some pictures of something and so I just told the car to slow down and I noticed there was a bison in the forest. I immediately told the car to stop. I got down, I got my lenses out and I just walked towards this bison. Uh, it was not this guy, there was actually a younger male uh, who was out in the open. Uh, I did some pictures, I took some pictures but uh, then I noticed this big male was at the far at the back in the background deeper in the forest so i slowly walked myself through through the forest uh, inching and closer and closer towards this big guy until i approached him he was massive he has some really impressive pair of horns he would have been easily about five five and a half feet uh, at the shoulder uh, almost as tall as i was uh, very muscular bull and i love the forest background as well that's why i took this kind of a background shot with the, the white flowers uh, and the, in the bottom. And uh, I, I did maintain a good distance because I don't know what these animals do. I was on foot. Uh, there was a fallen tree, so I, I crept behind the tree and got, got to a safe distance as I captured these photographs. Uh, here you can see how big he is. He's putting his black tongue out and he's looking around, sniffing around. Uh, very impressive animal and something I would really treasure for the rest of my life. So that being said, we come to an end of this uh, photographic journey. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this and look forward to uh, having uh, having to travel with all of you once again. Uh, hopefully you can join me in one of our upcoming tours maybe once the pandemic is a little bit settled. We hope to do some tours next year uh, as well uh, to Africa and to other parts of the world. Uh, so thank you so much and do stay tuned for more updates.